And we're at the Emerging Issues Forum, and we're joined by Jeffrey Lacker. You're the president of the Federal Reserve Bank of Richmond. Welcome to That's North right. Carolina Now. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's great to participate in this event. Very impressive. One of the big issues that we've been talking about is building a workforce for the uh, innovation companies, for those technology companies, and talking about skills. And this is something that you're very passionate about. Tell us a little bit about uh, what you see for the future. Well, uh, it's a challenge for our society, and I think in the last decade or so, we've come to appreciate how important that challenge is and, and how, how big the need is to, to do better at uh, preparing our young people for the world they're entering. Uh, it's a very different world than kids in the 50s were entering or you know the 20s or the 1890s. Uh, we have to keep up, uh, so that's why I'm passionate about it. Why, how do you think we can do this? What do you see that, um, that we, how can we keep up and keep those skill sets where they need to be? It's a good question. Um, so we've been focused on college um, enrollment for so many years. I think we have to broaden our horizons. First of all, I think um, it, it's clear that, that from the, the high college dropout rate that a lot of kids don't understand what they need uh, to, to, to do to prepare for college, how much math they'll need, what they're going to need to get where they want to go. So we've got to do a better job of in, informing young people and their families about what college preparedness really requires. I also think we need to inform kids as well about uh, broader options outside of college. College isn't for everyone, and we need a lot of skills for which college isn't the, the best place to learn them. Uh, you know, I'm thinking about uh, welders, people in advanced manufacturing, uh, you know, uh, machine tool operators and the like. Um, and so we've got to get kids early, like in middle school, and teach them what these other options look like and teach them that high school is going to help doing, uh, get them there as well because I think we focus for too long on, on, on thinking, of, well, high school is what I want to do if I want to go to college. If I don't want to go to college, I don't need to finish high school. And that's a bad mistake. Uh, kids need to, need to finish high school. And then I, need, I think we need to focus on early childhood because a lot of, a lot of investments in education, sometimes the, the payoffs sort of peter out in that people don't, you know, after five years, they're about where the control group was. But with early childhood, it's different. Those payoffs are lifelong because you're talking about non-cognitive skills that really help people learn. It makes them better learners the rest of their life. So I think those investments have huge payoffs as well. Those are the things I've been emphasizing. When you look at trends with income groups, and, and you're talking about with different skills, how would this affect that with the income groups that we're seeing? Well, that's a good question, too. Um, and this is another reason why this is so important. Uh, the income distribution has been widening. The gap between people at maybe the 10th percentile and the 90th percentile, or pe people without a high school education or with a high school education only, and people with a college or more advanced degrees, that's been widening steadily since 1980 or so. And the reason seems to be that the technology we're adopting now that's being rolled out um, makes uh, the demand for skills higher. And it's not doing much to improve the productivity of low-skilled workers. So we're not, we're not keeping up with the demand for skilled workers. If we did, you wouldn't see the wide, widening wage premium. If we were able to keep up, we'd be able to squash that premium and uh, have less inequality in our country. Um, so it's, I view it as a market signal, that widening p income inequality, a signal that we need to redouble our efforts as a society and do a better job of investing in human capital, uh, the skills and, and, and talents of our people. When you look at North Carolina, what do you see uh, the state doing very well and what do you think we can improve on? Um, I, we've been down here a number of times um, on visits that have focused on uh, skills and, and what sort of innovative things are going on. And I'm, I'm pretty impressed with North Carolina. I think the, their community college system is, is really um, one of the leaders in the country at partnering with economic development agencies and companies and uh, developing programs that train kids for real jobs, um, working with high schools um, to develop internship programs that help them make that, that traverse from high school into the working world uh, and supplementing their high school training with the kind of things the community college does really well and hooking them up with employers. So I'm really impressed with the kind of things I see going on in North Carolina. And of course, that doesn't even mention the outstanding higher education um, the institutions that the state has as well. So North Carolina is doing a good job and they're clearly focused on it at a senior level. I applaud their efforts. Jeffrey Lacker, thank you so much for joining us on North Carolina Now. My pleasure.